Tesla recently launched a seven-seat option for their popular crossover, the Model Y. And just a week ago, my wife Jenny and I, along with our two kids, got to see one in real life. Now, initially, I thought this was kind of a joke and it was going to be totally useless back there because there's not a lot of space. But after testing it out with my family, I've changed my mind. So now the question becomes, if you're looking to buy a Tesla with seven seats, do you go with the Model X or the Model Y? Well, let's free the data on this and I'll give you my thoughts as to which one I would pick. Before we go on though, I wanted to mention quickly that I just relaunched my Data Academy and it's now more affordable than ever. The world runs on data and knowing how to work with it is increasingly a valuable skill in nearly every line of work. So at FTD Academy, our mission is to help you elevate those skills so that you can have an impact on the world. You'll learn soft skills like communicating with numbers and hard skills like building interactive dashboards with Tableau. So if you wanna learn more, Go check out ftdacademy.com slash Ben and sign up for my free mini course that will teach you how to turn a boring spreadsheet into a beautiful dashboard all in about 30 minutes. Now let's hop back to the video. All right, let's start with the most important factor when buying an EV, range. The long range all wheel drive Model 3 comes in at an estimated 326 miles of range. It can charge at 250 kilowatts top speed. This is tremendous and it's actually been updated even since the initial launch less than a year ago. So it may even get more miles as time goes on. Now the Model X, which was just refreshed, that includes some new hardware updates, starts at 360 miles for the dual motor all wheel drive edition and can charge at that same 250 kilowatt version three speed. So clearly the Model X wins this category, but I'll add that 326 miles is nothing to sneeze at, especially because sneezing at things is bad but also because unless you go on these long road trips on a regular basis, that 40 mile difference isn't really gonna mean a whole lot to you, especially not on a day-to-day -day or even week-to-week -week basis. So next let's look at performance slash utility. The Model Y long range all wheel drive comes in with a zero to 60 time of 4.8 seconds, which is about the same as a BMW X7. And as far as the Model X long range all wheel drive, we're looking at 3.8 seconds zero to 60, which is on par with the latest Lamborghini SUV, the Urus. But really, if you're talking SUVs and crossovers, I think what we're really after is utility. Performance is nice, but utility is kind of the key factor. So as far as storage goes, the Model Y comes in with 68 cubic feet of storage with the seats folded down. And as for the Model X, if you go with the five or seven seat option, here we'll look at the seven seat option, fold the seats down, you've got about 88 cubic feet of storage. So the X wins again here, but one thing to pay attention to is the seating configuration. In my Model X that I sold a couple of months ago, we had a six seat configuration, which was really nice because the middle seats were really kind of comfortable. They were called captain's chairs, but they didn't fold down. So what that means is that it was hard to fit bigger items in there. So if you're after utility, the Model X you're gonna want is the five or seven seat configuration. And as I mentioned at the top, I recently had a chance to check out that Model Y seven seat configuration, and I was honestly shocked at how good it is. They somehow were able to fit forward facing seats suitable for small humans or possibly kids in forward facing car seats without losing any storage at all. Essentially, the only bit you lose is this second false bottom area, which is really just for smaller, slim items such as your charging equipment. Now, let's talk about tech. The Model Y is clean and modern with everything embedded into this central 15-inch touchscreen. It has built-in streaming services like Spotify, a dash cam, and the security mode system that uses all the surrounding cameras to detect suspicious activity and then records it locally if anything happens, like someone bumps your car or were to break a window or something. The Model Y has all of the latest driver assist capabilities that Tesla offers and one day, according to Tesla, will be able to drive itself completely on its own, fully self-driving as they call it, or FSD. Now, of course, that will cost a bit extra, but even what it can do now is pretty impressive. The doors and windows operate how normal doors and windows do on a car. This will be relevant in a second. And otherwise, the car is almost advanced as they come in terms of tech. I say almost because the latest refresh of the Model X has kind of put things over the top. The Model X has a massive 17 inch landscape mode display in the middle, plus another screen behind the wheel to help maximize that middle screen's use. They also have an additional screen in the back of the center console, so people in the back seat or middle seat, if you have the third row, are able to watch something there as well. 
Unlike the Model Y, the Model X screen can pan left and right, so you can have the perfect viewing angle for whatever you might want to watch on there. Like the Model Y, the airflow for the air conditioning is controlled by the screen, or actually voice commands, and is directed by these two vents, which kind of work in opposition to point the air wherever you want it to go. And it is also completely hidden inside of the wood dash, which is pretty cool. The Model X has front ventilated seats and a HEPA filter that enables this biohazard defense mode. I've I actually found this nice when driving near big diesel trucks or whenever there's some kind of random foul smell outside, you flip that on, it just clears it right up. Then of course you have the new yoke steering wheel, which itself isn't really that crazy until you realize that there are no stocks for turn signals, lights, or even shifting from drive to reverse. How do you tell the car to go into drive or reverse, you might ask? Well, you don't. The car guesses which direction to go based on what obstacles it sees, context and nav map. And of course you can override that on the touchscreen. One additional feature, which may be coming to the Model Y soon as well, is the adaptive air suspension. And this will raise or lower the car based on your settings. This is really great if you live somewhere with lots of hills or bumpy roads. And also you can set it so that it remembers to raise or lower it based on your location using GPS. In addition, when you're going faster on the freeway, you can actually have it auto lower the car as much as possible to reduce drag, improving efficiency, and giving you even more range. You do this by just telling it how fast you want it to lower it at. Now, this is actually one of my favorite features of both the S and the X. So I hope the Model 3 and Model Y get it someday, but as of now, recording this in early February, that doesn't exist. Now, of course, we can't talk about tech and the Tesla Model X without talking about the Falcon wing doors. This is probably the thing that the Model X is most known for, are these doors. And the idea is that they go up instead of out, and they kind of fold in the middle. So they don't really take up a ton of room when they go up, but they can kind of open up and give you really great access in and out of the car. Now these doors have some pros and some cons. So first off, they look awesome. I, I think they're, they're incredible. But they also make getting in and out of the car really easy. And of course, if you're putting kids in car seats, it's a breeze since you don't have to bend down and kind of fish them around and set them in there. It's just really just fully upright and you just pop them in and out. It's great. On the downside, however, they are prone to errors and sometimes they don't open all the way when you need them to. And you can usually override that manually, but not always. Also, if you have a toddler that is the right height, they might be able to reach out and kick that close button, having the door come crashing down on top of you. I know that might not sound like a probable scenario, but if you ask my wife, she'll tell you she would never buy a Model X again because of this. And while yes, the doors do have a sensor that makes sure it doesn't tear you in half, I would say that when it closes down on top of you, it's coming just short of that. Yeah, this has happened to both me and my wife a couple times, and uh, it's painful. It's not something I recommend at all, zero out of 10. Now I could go on forever with the Model X tech. Uh, there's a reason that Elon calls it the Fabergé egg of cars, but you get the point. It has more bells and whistles than probably anything on the market, except maybe a Rolls Royce SUV with the umbrella in the door. Now it's a lot. And if more tech is better, then the X clearly wins this category. All right, now let's talk styling, the most subjective category of them all. Personally, I prefer the Model Y styling over the X. The Model Y has a modern and sporty look, and in my view, it's really an improvement over its smaller cousin, the Model 3. And if the Model X is kind of the bigger, more filled out version of the Model S, I think in doing so, they just ruined the proportions of it. So for here, I would have to go with the Model Y. All right, now I saved the best for last here when comparing these cars, and that's one of the biggest factors, the price. I'm filming this in early February, 2021. So keep that in mind because Tesla likes to change their price a lot, especially when I'm you know, recording a video, it just kind of seems to coincide for some reason. Currently, the Tesla Model Y long range all wheel drive retails for $52,990 here in the US before any incentives or potential savings. Compare that if you were to go get a Model X long range all wheel drive, you're looking at $93,490 before any incentives or potential savings. Both prices here include that added cost of the third row, since that's what I'm really interested in comparing. If you didn't want that third row, you could subtract $3,000 from the Model Y or $3,500 from the Model X. So this is really what it comes down to for me. From a practical standpoint, I just don't see enough value in the difference between the Y and the X to justify an additional $40,000. I mean, that's another Tesla you could buy. Personally, the X is just over the top and there's really no way I would recommend it, at least 
In my situation, $95,000 is just too much, and the flashiness of the doors is just over the top. Now, the added range is nice, but for me, that $40,000 difference isn't worth it, considering on a road trip, that would mean about an extra 10 minutes at one charging stop to make up for that. I've said it before, and I'll stand by it. If the Model X was cheaper and had regular doors, I would love it. And that's basically what the Model Y is. Tesla has done a fantastic job adding this third row to the Model Y. I couldn't even believe it when I saw it. I thought it was gonna be a total flop, but it gives you nearly the same seating capacity of the Model X, but for close to half the price. I would absolutely recommend the Model Y for anyone that is looking to store more stuff or seat more people over the Model X. Now, if you wanna see my review of our Model Y with my wife, Jenny, go check out the video over here. And make sure to subscribe below and turn notifications on, otherwise you might not get notified when we do our next review, which should be coming out in a week or so. That's it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you back here in the next one.